In this module of the webinar, we're going to talk about impact. Impact is a concept that is more and more used lately in the business world. And this because for decades, businesses were flourishing without really being accountable for the negative externalities they had within the local communities where they used to operate or on the environment as a whole. And um, it's time now for mainstream businesses to onboard the sustainability path. The current climate crisis, the social inequalities are huge problems the whole world faces, and they need to be addressed urgently. Governments and philanthropy alone cannot solve them. So we definitely need businesses to step in, and business as usual is not an option anymore. Impact refers to a planned change, so it has to be intentional for better social and or environmental outcomes that can be traced back to a certain measure or intervention taken. So they have to be result of something that is done in order to achieve that impact. Uh, this term is called causality and it refers to the relationship between cause and impact. So it applies to a series of interrelated events and conditions. Impact can be positive or negative, it can be intended or unintended, and it can be direct or indirect. And an activity can have an immediate and direct impact on certain people, which we can call beneficiaries, but it can also have a more far-reaching effect on a wider group, people in general, different organizations, institutions, or even entities that are not directly engaged in those activities carried on. Some of them might not even know that they are being affected at all, but the impact of the action might be significant to them. And we're going to talk about this in the stakeholder analysis further down during the webinar. And usually social entrepreneurs, we use what we call a theory of change to explain and demonstrate their impact. They choose a challenge that they want to address. They decide on what intervention is the most appropriate to be carried on in order to reach the desired impact, the planned change for better social and environmental outcomes. Impact Management Project, it's a, it's a forum, it's a time-bound forum that began in 2016, and it aimed at building a global consensus on how to measure, assess, and report impact on people and natural environment. Uh, this is a framework used widely that helps organizations understanding what is their impact. And uh, this framework that used to be developed within the impact management project can be used by any organization and by any type of investor. For the moment, we'll focus on the usage of the framework for organizations, for social enterprises. The impact management project uh, reached in the end a global consensus that the impact can be deconstructed into five main dimensions. What, how, how much, contribution, and risk. The what, uh, the first dimension of impact, refers to the outcome that is occurring in a given period of time, and also how important this outcome is to the people or the planet that are experiencing it. The second dimension, the who, relates to the ones experiencing the given outcome. The how much, the third dimension of impact, refers to the level of, of impact across scale, depth, and duration. The contribution uh, understands the enterprise's contribution to the outcome, accounting for what would have happened anyway, meaning it extracts out of the desired change, the one that can be clearly allocated to the intervention. And the risk, the fifth dimension, 
refers to the risk on planet, on, on the people that would happen if the impact does not occur as expected. And answering these five dimensions of, uh, of impact helps entrepreneurs classify their impact into three main categories. Those categories or impact classes reflect the enterprise intentions and can be grouped as simple as A, B, and C, of course, based on the five dimensions uh, of impact that we have been discussing previously. The A comes from acting to avoid harm, B from benefiting stakeholders, and C from contributing to solutions. Using this language, uh, helps impact organizations discussing with investors on how they will create the impact, making sure that uh, all the sides involved in the conversation have the same understanding of the language used. And now the time has come to test the knowledge acquired so far. Are you ready for one question? Good luck for building global consensus on how to measure, assess, and report impacts on people and the natural environment, you got it right. If not, please review the video one more time to find the right answer. By now, you finished this module on defining impact. Please click the button to download the booklet of this competence unit for further reading and more references. The next module refers to the theory of change. Uh, and before diving deep into what theory of change is, let's talk a bit about the sustainable development goals. The concept of sustainable development traces back to the United Nations. And it was described for the first time in 1987 as the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And in order to achieve sustainable development, the United Nations adopted in 2015 17 sustainable development goals known as SDGs. They used to be called Millennium Development Goals. They are set to be achieved by 2030. And they are defined in a list of 169 specific targets. Uh, the SDGs, being endorsed by the UN, have been widely adopted by governments, the profit sector, and also the non-profit organizations. And they became the starting point of many social enterprises who focus on one or several SDGs in order to build their own theory of change. And of course, when referring to SDGs, they have to be understood in their own local context, meaning poverty in Luxembourg is different than poverty in India. We understood the SDGs and we agreed on this common global language. We can dive deeper into the concept of uh, theory of change. So the theory of change or the impact value chain is a methodology developed to plan and demonstrate how a desired change is expected to happen in a given context. It defines the long-term goals, the impact, and then the outcomes. And based on this, it maps backwards the necessary preconditions in order to achieve those long-term goals. Those preconditions are outputs, activities, and inputs. The inputs are the things needed in order to deliver the activity, basically the resources that we have to put in. The activities is the, the part where we describe the services or the products provided, uh, and also how, what we're actually doing in order to be able to provide them. The outputs refer to a summary in numbers of the activities carried on, 
The outcomes are the changes intended to be seen on the short term. And the impact is uh, basically a sum of all the changes on the long term, out of which we deduct the, the counterfactual impact, meaning the impact that would have happened anyway without the intervention of our activity. The essence of the entrepreneurship, especially of social entrepreneurship, is seeing problems as opportunities. We all know that uh, during our times, the world is facing many ecological and social challenges in all areas. And businesses became one of the solutions used in order to address them. So if you're looking for an opportunity to start a social enterprise, you can start looking around and identifying the problems in your community, in your region or in your country. And based on your personal values or your personal history, is there maybe one such problem that is particularly painful or unbearable for you? For any aspiring social entrepreneur, it's recommended to look at the SDGs and to understand in your own local context which ones could be tackled. And the topics that can be addressed through social enterprise type of activities include access to education, food waste, climate change, um, inclusion of minorities, refugees, other vulnerable groups, women empowerment. And these are just uh, some areas of, of impact. It's not an exhaustive list. Therefore, it's highly recommended to critically assess what's happening in your own local context. Uh, before uh, launching a social enterprise or responsible business, it's crucial to perform a, a thorough full stakeholder analysis and mapping. The idea here is to look beyond the shareholders and really understand who can eventually be impacted by your business. And by impacted, we're looking at both positive or if any negative type of impact. And stakeholders can include your clients, your beneficiaries, the suppliers, all the partners on the value chain, the shareholders, the employees, your local communities, your local government, even your bank. And it can go as far as the families of the beneficiaries. And um, it's important here to identify the key stakeholders, map them, select the most relevant ones and analyze their expectations. And once they are identified, try to engage them, understand what their expectations are and verify with them if those expectations are, uh, are met. To sum up, the recommended steps in performing a quality stakeholder analysis and mapping is first to list, understand them and their expectations, prioritize both stakeholders and expectations, start acting and give means of interaction and keep an active feedback loop and perform uh, periodically reviews. And uh, some of the stakeholders may, may help you even further. Some of them might be needed to be involved in order to identify um, their main characteristics Maybe you can group them in subgroups with common characteristics and address them in these uh, subgroups. And uh, they can help you identify other stakeholders that uh, in the listing and identification stage of your analysis, you did not initially consider it. Another key topic uh, is um, the topic of sustainability in SMEs. Um, even if you're a small and medium organization, embedding sustainability uh, is needed for, for a wide range of reasons. First of all, the SMEs are exposed to more sustainability-related risks than large organizations. 
they don't have the cash reserves of larger companies. They do not have the power to influence the complex supply chains. Uh, so in this context, ignoring the topic of sustainability can prove to be more costly for SMEs than for larger companies. Then nowadays, shareholders, staff, customers, and all the other stakeholders expect the same commitment to sustainability from all businesses, regardless of size. Moreover, being small in the area of sustainability can be an advantage. It means that uh, SMEs can be more flexible and are able to make changes quickly and embedding sustainable practices in the DNA of SMEs makes them more resilient and attractive. A study from the Bocconi School of Management shows that the European SMEs are primarily active in three specific sustainability domains. One is employee welfare, the other one is environment, especially in the area of waste management, water consumption and building efficiency. And the third one is community engagement, getting involved with local programs and uh, local charities. What is the theory of change? If you answer that the theory of change is a methodology used to both plan and demonstrate how a desired change is expected to happen in a given context, you got it. If not, please go back and review the previous section one more time. Uh, there is the Global Impact Investing Network working, working in several areas related to uh, impact measurement and impact investments and social businesses. And um, the GENE, as it's known, defines the impact investments as investments made with the intention to generate a positive, measurable social and environmental impact alongside a financial return. Impact investments can be made in both emerging and developed markets and target a range of returns from below market rates to market rates, depending on investor strategic goals. And it's important to mention that the impact investing is different from environmental, social and governance measures which is basically a lens that is applied by investors to monitor and mitigate environmental, social, and governance risks when investing. So here with ESG, uh, we don't have the same intention to generate a positive impact as we have with impact investments. And um, when talking about impact in the context of impact investments, uh, one of the key features is the one related to intentionality. Uh, and by this, we mean the intention of an investor to have a positive social or and environmental impact mm -hmm. through its investments. This is a core characteristic of impact investing. And this is the main area that differentiates traditional investments from impact investments. Another characteristic uh, of impact investment investing is the measurement, the management, and the reporting of social and environmental performance. And all this in order to ensure the transparency and the accountability made under the asset class of impact investments. Uh, the impact targets and metrics are defined and monitored during the lifetime of investment, and they are assessed from both a quantitative and a qualitative way. Monitoring impact implies also embedding feedback loops and it identifying and managing impact risks that can be positive or negative again. And another characteristic of impact investment is the additionality. Uh, this refers to the very specific and very direct contribution of the investor that enables the investee to increase the net positive impact generated by its activities. 
It means that uh, basically impact investing goes beyond a just pure transactional mindset. For an, uh, for an example, an investor can provide non-financial contributions by sharing its network with the investees or provide advice and support, of course, beyond the financial investment already made. So the investor really does the extra mile alongside with the entrepreneur, alongside with the investee. And now, as we understood what impact investing is, how do we find impact investors? And this is the next module of our webinar. But before finding impact investors, we have to understand them. And uh, one criteria based on which we can understand them is how they are positioning themselves related to the impact. They could be divided into two main categories, the ones that are investing for impact and the ones that are investing with impact. There is a whole spectrum of uh, impact investors uh, from purely grant makers, the ones that uh, invest non-returnable financial instruments to social purpose organizations that will never be financially or self-sustainable, but who have in exchange a significant, deep, long-term impact um, in the communities they are working in. And there, as we move uh, on, on the spectrum uh, closer to, if you want, traditional investors, we have uh, uh, investors for, for impact that invest in social purpose organizations that have the potential to eventually become financially sustainable or self-sustainable, even though they are not able to generate any financial returns. Then, uh, and now we're talking more about social investments as opposed to grant making. Um, there are investors that are looking at social purpose organizations that already have a proven financial model and that might generate a return. Um, and then we're talking about uh, the investors that are proactively looking for impact while also looking for a financial return. And here we're talking about for-profit businesses that have the intention to generate a positive social impact. The first type of investors have a crucial role in actually building a social infrastructure and building a pipeline of more financially sustainable and investment ready social enterprises that are going to be appealing for those impact investors looking for a financial return as well. Uh, in the context of impact investors, a widely used concept is the one of venture philanthropy, which is a high engagement, deep involvement, and also long-term approach of investors where they, they support the, the social purpose organizations in order to maximize their social impact. Venture philanthropists, they, they have a business and an investor mindset that it's applied to charities and NGOs in the way of actually doing business. So they are not investing only in social entrepreneurs. The venture philanthropists that invest in, in charities and NGOs, they are mainly looking for a social return of their investment, not so much for a financial return of investment, meaning that they are not motivated by financial returns, but rather by impact. And as we have a wide range of impact investors, uh, we have a whole spectrum of types of capital and we have specific investors using specific financial instruments. So in order to, to find the right, the, the appropriate impact investor for our social enterprise, we also have to understand the, the type of uh, financial instruments used when talking about investment. And we have here a scheme uh, defining the, the spectrum of capital and grouping the, the financial instruments used um, based on the approach the investor has, the financial goals they, they look for, 
the key features of the instruments and uh, impact intentions. Uh, we talk here about traditional investments, about responsible investments with the subgroup of impact investments and about philanthropy. And uh, for traditional investments, the focus is to, to obtain financial returns, while for philanthropy, the focus is to obtain impact returns. And in between, we have a whole range of uh, different types of capital used in order to achieve both financial returns and impact returns. Now we understood uh, the type of impact investors, we overviewed the type of capitals to be used, and it's time to understand how we can find impact investors. Um, there exist several networks. We need to also understand where we are in terms of uh, our own investment readiness. Do we have just uh, an idea for a social enterprise? Do we already prototype a product or a service? Do we have a running and a proven business model that we need to consolidate? Or are we already at the scaling stage? But as an early stage startup, um, you might want to look at impact business angels or incubation acceleration programs with an investing arm or early stage impact funds. Uh, these are the types of, uh, of investors that are willing to take risks in supporting a startup. And if you have a hybrid business model that combines for-profit activities with not-for-profit activities, foundations and venture philanthropies can be also approached. And uh, a good uh, point of start is looking into the local, if any, or national business angel networks and uh, identify the business angels that are really looking for impact. For instance, just for the for the sake of sharing some examples, we listed here for you some impact investors that are supporting early stage social enterprises. For instance, Tonic, it's a global community of impact investors and they are group, they can be searched for, for based on region or, or based on impact stages, uh, stage of development of the social enterprise. Uh, the European Venture Philanthropy Association has also a strong directory of, uh, of impact investors and uh, the same organization, EVPA, which is Brussels based, uh, published uh, a report with a list of impact funds or programs that have an investment arm uh, besides Tonic and EVPA, Valores, a venture philanthropy fund, and, uh, and NEST are other funds that are actively investing in Europe. Of course, these are just some examples. The, uh, the list of impact investors is much broader. Once you identified the ones that are right for you, comparing their uh, financial return expectations, their impact return expectations, and your own investment readiness uh, stage, uh, it's important to start communicating with uh, with them. But uh, it's it's advisable to reach out by sending an introductory deck or a pitch deck of around 15 slides uh, that would have to cover some key components. What are the key facts of your social enterprise? What makes you special and why this will work? The key facts refer to the sector of the social enterprise, the geography, the performance, the timeline, and the beneficiaries of your activities. What makes you special? Every investor is going to ask why investing in you and not any other social enterprise out there. So you have to convince the impact investors that you are special and you're worthy of investments. And here, the, the team and the qualification, the complementarity uh, among the team members are, are key. 
the story, the motivation of the founders, the impact thesis, the theory of change, and of course, don't forget to refer to the SDGs. Remember that this is the uh, common language recognized globally. Uh, make sure all these are underlined and convincing. And uh, you have to base this uh, on facts and figures in order to convince the impact investors that it will work. Talk about the opportunity size, uh, the momentum, why now? The competition, show that you know your market and prove uh, that you are able to execute the strategy in order to reach um, out the impact that you plan for. Remember that uh, the theory of change um, helps investors quickly understand uh, what is the intended impact and refer to the SDGs as this is the common global language used in the investing world. Um, do not forget to include uh, proposed impact metrics because remember one of the key characteristics of impact investing as discussed previously implies the measuring and the managing of the impact. And yes, we're talking about impact investors, but they are still investors. And you cannot afford to neglect the financial analysis of your social enterprise. So make sure that you have a sound business proposals and the figures you present there are based on a sound market research. <laughs> 